Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. I'm Derek Morris. And I'm Anthony Kent, and I'm delighted that you've joined us for this program. You know, this topic today, learning to hear God's call and then remain faithful to that call, it's vitally important. It sounds like a very practical and important topic, obviously. And what's more, we have a wonderful guest, Derek. Anthony, uh, I have been impacted personally by the ministry of Pastor Wintley Phipps, both as a gospel singer and a preacher of the Word of God. And we'll learn some practical lessons as we listen to him today. And he's a great example of one who has stayed focused and faithful in ministry as well. That's right. Sometimes even in our own ministries, there are rabbits that we could chase after that would distract us from what God is really calling us to do. And I think as Wintley explores his own journey, shares lessons with us, it's going to be very helpful to pastors around the world. Fantastic, Derek. Looking forward to it. And we're glad that you joined us for this important program today on Ministry in Motion. Hearing the call of God and then remaining faithful to that call, that you can be all that God is calling you to be. We invite you to stay with us on Ministry in Motion. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, hearing the call of God to ministry and remaining faithful to that call. Our guest, Pastor Wintley Phipps. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Good to be with you. Wintley, you've been such a blessing to my life as I've, I've heard your gospel music and powerful preaching. We're talking about hearing the call of God to ministry. How old were you when you sensed that call of God on your life? I was 16 years old when I was chasing another call. I wanted to be a rock singer, a pop singer. Uh, but I met my pop music singing hero, and he was stoned. And I said, mm, I don't think so. So then I was lost for a little bit. What do I do uh, with this desire to use my gifts? And I was invited to come and sing at uh, a little... Adventist school called Kingsway College in Oshawa, Canada. And the choir director, James Bingham, had heard me sing at my mother's church and invited me to travel with the choir one summer when I wasn't even a student. Is that right? And so I had to take time off of my other school, my public school, to travel hmm. for a week. <clears throat> but I was around young Adventist Christian young people, and they had something that I wanted. They had a joy that I had not seen, a peace that I had not seen. And they really literally led me to Christ. And I gave my life to the Lord. And when I gave my life to the Lord, it was, I felt simply like a recruit marching up into uh, the base saying, wherever you want me to serve, I'll serve. And, uh, uh, let me tell you also about how I came to the Lord. I, when I went to the school, Kingsway College, I, I was in culture shock because... <laughs> From you know, public school to a Christian yes, school. Yes, exactly. You know, they had lights out at a certain hour back then. You know, <laughs> uh, you couldn't hold hands with the girls on campus. You know, that was str some strange stuff, you know. And... Um, and I went to the dean of men and I said, you know, I can't take this. I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to go back to the city. And he said, is that what you really want to do? I said, yeah. And then he said, why don't you do for once, not what you want to do, but what God wants you to do. Mm. And I guess that has really been the undercurrent of all of this, the decisions that I've made in ministry. Why don't you do what God wants you to do? And not just what you want to do. And so I went up to my room, I got down on my knees, and it was the first time I'd really ever prayed. And I said, God, <clears throat> whatever you want me to do, I'll do. If you want me to be a garbage man, for you I'm willing to be a garbage man. If the only music I'll ever know is hy singing hymns on the back of a, a garbage truck, that's fine. So it was a complete surrender. Mm. And then I said, God, you know, I'd like to travel, use my talents for you, if that's your will for me, 
You open the doors. You let me see. One day went by. And the next day, two men came up to me and said, are you Wintley Phipps? I said, yes. Oh, we've been hearing about you. We're from the Heritage Singers, the Heritage family, which was the Canadian equivalent of the Heritage Singers. And we want you to travel and do singing evangelism with us. And I'm in shock because I'd never prayed and then... You're still 16 years old. I'm still 16 and I'm seeing this prayer answered. And as I walked the campus under deep conviction over the next few days and weeks, God spoke to my heart. Mm. God said, I've seen your dreams. Give me your dreams. I'll let you see what I've been dreaming for you. Mm. And then God said, if you can just be faithful, I'm going to take your life down an unusual path, which will allow you to sing for the masses of people. It will allow you to minister to people of power and influence. And I want you to prepare to articulate the issues of religious freedom, hmm. which will be what the last days are all about. I hid that in my heart because I didn't want to go around telling anybody, oh, the Lord told me I was going to be speaking to right. millions of they people. They might not understand. Exactly. They, you, he's, he's off his rocker a little bit, you know. But the call had come to you. Absolutely. You know, the text that comes to my mind as you're sharing, Wentley, mm -hmm. is humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Absolutely. And he will lift you up. He will. He will. And so I then... It was clear that I was going to do ministry. So I began looking around for where would I go to prepare for ministry. And I heard about a little school in Huntsville, Alabama called Oakwood College then, Oakwood University. Hitched a ride with a friend of mine. And I was I'd never seen the place before. But when I got there, again, it was confirmed, this is where you need to be. And I went to the, uh, the registrar. I said, you know, I didn't apply but I really want to register. <laughs> she said, this is strange. Uh, I said, I got $300. She said, $300. It costs $533 to get in. And then she said, what did you say your name was again? I said, my name is Wintley Phipps. She said, Wintley? She says, hold on a minute. She went to the back, and she came out with a ledger card back then. No computers, ledger card. Right. Uh, and said, uh, this is funny. There's a ledger card here with your name on it with a credit of $633, all that you need to get in. Hmm. Again, so God just, every step I took, he just kept providing and showing that he wanted me to be in ministry. So that gave a supernatural confirmation. Absolutely. Uh, because th this money just came from a unsolicited donor? Unsolicited. But unsolicited. a confirmation to you that that conviction you were feeling in your heart yeah. wasn't just your dream or wishful thinking. Absolutely. And uh, God has always done that since then. Uh, when I was a student at Oakwood, you're talking about the lessons that I learned that really have provided the foundation for all of the success God has allowed me to have in ministry. We'll talk a little more about the experience Absolutely. at Oakwood, but, but yeah. we've got one principle here. You notice God is at work, and you surrender to Him. Absolutely. You humble yourself and, and bring your dreams into alignment with His dreams. Absolutely. And God's going to show His mighty power, isn't He? Yes, He will. Perhaps you're sensing a call to ministry, maybe as a full-time pastor or a lay leader in your congregation. Notice God's working. And stay with us for Ministry in Motion. We'll look at some other practical insights that will help you not only to hear God's call, but to be faithful to His call throughout your ministry. We'll be right back with Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. We're talking about hearing God's call, and Pastor Wintley Phipps, you've shared the conviction that came to you, even at 16 years of age, yes. that God had a great plan. How did you hear God leading you once you got to Oakwood College? Well, when I got to Oakwood, uh, it was a very important step, because it was a step of faith, and uh, not realizing I would 
meet my wife there, uh, and I would learn some very important lessons about ministry there, and in some very subtle ways. Uh, probably one of the greatest lessons I learned that has provided the foundation for a lot of, almost all of the successes I've had in ministry, in music and preaching ministry. One day, Elder E.E. E. Cleveland came down from the General Conference to preach. And I know him as a powerful preacher of the powerful Word of God. Preacher. And uh, so I'm 17, 18 years old. We're students. And this great man of God has come to preach. Uh, and as they were introducing him, my eyes focused on him during the introduction. Mm -hmm. And he sat there with his eyes closed and his hand on his chin, and he just was rocking back and forth and patting his feet, big feet. And I kept just observing that. And then when he got up to preach, he soared. And I deduced, hmm, maybe his soaring probably had something to do with his pre-flight checklist. All right. So when they would ask me to sing or speak, I was still a kid. While they were introducing me, I would put my hand on my chin. Mm. And I'd close my eyes. Mm. And I'd rock back and forth. And I'd pat my little feet. <laughs> little did I realize I was learning how to go to the mountain mm. before you go to the multitude. So that when you come down off the mountain in ministry, your face is shining. Mm. There is a, an aura, there's a sense, there's a presence that you've been with God in the mountain. And consequently, and, and then I had another experience. The, one of the first sermons I ever preached was in Nashville, Tennessee. And I remember it was the first time I sensed the anointing of God. Mm. When I came down off of the rostrum, I felt like God had put his arm around my shoulder and was accompanying me down off of the rostrum. There was a, an, an amazing sense of warmth. And, uh, and once you've had that experience... You can't go back. You cannot go back. Mm. You, and, and, but not only can you not go back, but I made that what I wanted to be the cornerstone yes. of my ministry, people sensing the presence of God. So no longer, and still, I don't, I don't, not, I don't want to be known for the person who can sing the highest or hold the longest note or sing the lowest note. Or, none of those things are important to me. When I come down off the rostrum, it is my earnest prayer that the people who have been there in these moments of ministry are walking away saying, did not our hearts burn within us? Yes. We sense the presence of God here today. And uh, that's not something you can control in ministry. That's something you need God to bless you with. Right. Uh, and it's often dependent upon your walk with God at that moment, your conduct as well. It's interesting when, when Jesus sent out his disciples, uh, they become apostles then, they're mm -hmm. sent out, mm -hmm. but he says you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Exactly. So I hear you saying there's not only the certainty that God has called can be confirmed in supernatural ways as you yes. saw, but, but there is this experience of the anointing of the Holy Spirit right. that's, that's palpable. It, it's something that you, you sense with your whole being right. that the Spirit is now empowering you, you to do what you've been called to do. That's correct. And people, no matter their background, even if they're atheists, they sense that difference. Yes, yes. They sense that difference. And Elder Cleveland used to say it this way, they can tell whether it's thunder and lightning with no rain. Yes. You know, there are a lot of people who are thunder and lightning with no rain. Or you can shout loud, but there's no power. There's no power, exactly. And so uh, 
I remember once uh, Diana Ross called and said uh, uh, she's opening up her, she was opening up her biggest tour around the world and wanted me to be the opening act hmm. in her tour. A gospel singer. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, so I said, I went back to her and I said, you know, I, I think I need to remind you of what I do because here's another principle in ministry God gave me. He has taught me that you don't have to compromise to be recognized. Crucial lesson. Absolutely. Just be faithful to the best of your ability and any door God wants open for you will open for you. But you don't have to compromise to be recognized. You do not have to compromise to be recognized. And so here Diana Ross calls and says, I want you to open up my biggest tour. And so I, I said, you know, hey, wait a minute. Uh, I don't do baby, let's get together. You know, I, <laughs> I, I only do music that honors and glorifies God. The tour didn't work out. And the gentleman who married her, who we were dear friends, called me one day from England, from the Isle of Man, and said, uh, I had dinner with Diana and her husband last night, and she said she was trying to get you to tour with her, and it doesn't look like it's possible, and she's really disappointed. And then he said, she said to me, because Wintley's got something, hmm. and I don't know what it is. So even then, uh, there's this witness that's happening, but I, I want to hold that one idea before we sure. go to the break, that when you know God has called you, you sense that in your heart, and, and confirmation comes, if you're listening, that He's going to exalt you, He'll lift you up, right. but you don't have to compromise in order to be recognized. Exactly. And what we're going to look at in the last segment of our program today is how to remain faithful to that call when potential distractions come, and maybe even success. How do you remain faithful to the call that God has placed on your life. We'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at feedback at ministryinmotion.tv, your own journey in ministry. But we'll learn some more lessons from Pastor Wintley Phipps when we come back. Stay tuned for Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, hearing the call of God to ministry and remaining faithful to that call. Joining us for this segment, our co-host, Anthony Kent. Thanks, Derek. And uh, Pastor Wintley Phipps, it's been an amazing conversation. Well, thank you. Great to I be here. I want to talk in this last section together about remaining true to the call, faithful to the call. You've had many potential distractions but you talked about a call when you were 16, supernatural confirmation of that, the anointing of God that you've sensed in your ministry and leading you in providential ways. Uh, talk to me about staying focused and remaining faithful to the call. Well, I, I think um, when you know what it's like to be in the hollow of God's hand mm. and to be used by God, nothing uh, can even compare with it. It's true. Uh, when you know what it's like to be as my, uh, one of my heroes, Mother Teresa mm. said, and she was an amazing human being, and it was my honor to sing Amazing Grace for her before she died. Mm. When you know what it's like to be, as she said, a, a little pencil in the hand of God, and you, you're writing his love story. Beautiful. Uh, it, it, it is, uh, nothing compares with it. And so yes, you can do a lot of other good things, but uh, you don't want to ever lose that. Um, jokingly, I tell people, one of the things that propels me is a dream that I carry in my heart. Uh, that one day, one day, I will be in heaven uh, working on my mansion with my holy hammer. <laughs> and I'll hear a knock on the door. When I open it, Jesus will be standing there, clothed in light, crown of glory on his head. 
And he'll say to me, my son, I'm about to go to some parts of my universe where they've never seen a child from earth who has been redeemed. And I want you to come go with me. Amen. Oh, and, and by the way, I want you to sing just before I speak. <laughs> Now, what would compare with that? That's what I'm saying. You yeah. may laugh if you want to, but that's my dream, you know, and that's what keeps me focused because there's no Grammy that can pull me away from that dream. Mm. There's no Oscar. There's no wealth. There is nothing. There is no meeting in no famous person I could meet. N there is nothing. I would rather uh, be impoverished and have that dream be a reality one day mm. than anything. Uh, so, so you ask, how do I stay focused in ministry? It may sound strange. That's my dream. You know, the text that came to my mind, fixing your eyes on Jesus, yes. the author and the perfecter of our faith. Exactly. So has that kept you preaching, doing pastoral ministry as well as a, a global ministry? Well, uh, also when you know that you've been called to preach, uh, you can go from church to church uh, and sit and listen to other people preach, but uh, there's something within you uh, that just cries out to, to do it. And so, yes, I am the president of the U.S. Dream Academy. Uh, it's an organization that tutors and mentors children whose parents are incarcerated mm. all across the United States. Uh, yes, I, uh, I have a recording career. Yes, I have a concert career. But uh, I got to get up and go to church someplace. Mm. I might as well preach when I get there if they want me to. You've been called to. Yeah, exactly. And I know you've I've, got a message to share. Yes, and, and listen, even though you're called to, uh, people have to open their pulpits to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. for, for you to exercise the call. And so just because, I guess you can go preach on the street corner and get a permit or something. But uh, yes, I've been blessed with congregations who said, we understand the unique calling on your life. And we want you to anchor your ministry here at this church. Uh, where I am now in Palm Bay, Florida, I'm the pastor of the Palm Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church. I have an associate pastor who handles the day-to-day -day administration of the church and speaks when I'm not there. But it gives me, uh, as again, uh, one of my heroes was Jesse Jackson, and I learned a lot of lessons from him. One of the things he said, uh, I was telling him about artists who were doing secular music and then doing religious music and then doing secular music. And he said, yeah, Phipps, yes, that's interesting. He said, but you can't ride two horses in the same race. Mm. Yeah. So I picked my horse. And you've been a local <laughs> pastor for 30 years. 35, 36 Preaching the years. word of God. Every, yeah, absolutely. And it's Anthony, been a joy. Anthony, any thoughts come to your sure, mind as we... Sure, sure. You know, Pastor Phipps, just listening to your story, it sounds as though... You, you've experienced ministry, the, the fullness of ministry, yeah. and you're not going to turn back. Yeah. You, you've yeah. tasted it, and anything else is a, a, a poor alternative. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's the difference between uh, drinking a, uh, <laughs> uh, an orange drink and 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. there's, just a, mm. there's just a natural sweetness yeah. that I enjoy in serving the Lord that... Mm. Anything else uh, will pale in insignificance. But then I've got my mind on a world that's to come. On the go. Mm. Mm. A world that's to come. And I realize this is just uh, temporary. Yes. Yeah. You know. But you keep tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. Absolutely. And you know, that's how you can keep your ministry fresh. You keep experiencing the joy of ministry in your life tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. And you remember how he called you, how he confirmed that in supernatural ways. We could each give testimony of that. And how you've sensed his anointing upon your life. Be faithful to that call, whether you're a full-time pastor or a lay leader. 
and be all that God is calling you to be. We're glad you joined us for Ministry in Motion today. You can go to our website at ministryinmotion.tv. You can watch this whole program again or many other programs in this series. We'd like to hear from you. You can also write to us at feedback at ministryinmotion.tv. Perhaps your call and how God has been leading in your life. Until next time, may God bless you in your ministry for Him. We're glad you joined us for Ministry in Motion.